presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to our man, George, in Newport Richie. George, what's going on, brother? Hello, Tom. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing great. Yourself? Yeah, great. I've been following you for the last two years, listening to your show. Well, thank you very much. Nice I appreciate it, Judge. All the hard work you've done for us over the years. Well, I really appreciate and, you calling uh, and saying hi. My pleasure, Tom. Okay. I'll listen to your show. Thank you, man. Have a great one, a safe okay. one. Appreciate it, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. What's going on, everyone? This is Jacob Shoup. This is, of course, the Tom O'Brien Show. Uh, we have a lot in store for you today. Thinking about what Tom would kind of want to go on, we're going to keep uh, Basil on. We're also going to have Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle Halfway through the show, I know uh, both of those guests are going to have uh, quite a bit to say. Uh, a little bit of an interesting market, not like too much going on, right? So you can kind of see this, you know, pre-election uh, consolidation kind of move is going on, even in the light of uh, some interesting, I would say, earnings. You know, there's still a lot more going on this week. Let's take a look at what we got going on right now in the industry, indices. You have the composite about 0.12%. You have the Dow Jones Industrial about 0.05%. That dollar is now popping above that 103 level, trading at 10407, very strong. You have crude oil up about 2.28%. You have that E mini essentially sideways, but off about 0.09%. And the gold contact uh, contract still making all time highs and uh, silver being very strong right behind it. You have the gold contract trading up 0.75%, 2,759 and 40 cents. You have silver up about 2.34%, uh, copper also up about 0.56%. Uh, let's see, the Russell off about 0.43. Small caps are getting kind of destroyed there recently. Uh, let's see what else we have, anything kind of interesting happening. Nokia still getting kind of hammered, even on uh, not great guidance. What do we got here? New Star off a little bit. Well, actually, you know what we can talk about is Nextera. So, yeah, we were talking with some people as well about some of the uranium companies in this morning. You're kind of, we'll see if it kind of recovered a little bit. Yeah, so you're, you're really, okay. this is kind of what I was saying a little bit yesterday, at least in the den, right? I'm worried we've kind of hit a saturation point here, um, at least in the short term on uh, uranium stocks. I believe CCJ is doing the exact same thing. So doing a little bit worse than the market itself and definitely some of the other base materials. Yep, so CCJ off about 2.11%. Let's take a look at Nextera. These guys have their earnings coming up on Wednesday. Uh, that's actually going to be before the market opened, which is fantastic. So they're kind of sideways right now. Uh, but still a little bit of a down day last session. Uh, we'll see what kind of happens uh, for them today. Uh, Wall Street expects the, the, this guy to uh, post about 99 cents in EPS. So that implies a 5.3% uh, rise. Well, revenue is expected to rise 11.7% to $8 billion. I do think the rest of the nuclear market is going to essentially follow how Nextera does. You know, so I don't know if this is a positioning in a sense uh, among other people, uh, basically expecting Nextera to maybe not do as well as kind of expected. Let's take a look at Oaklo because I haven't looked at that all today. Yeah, so down 10.58%. I would say that it is... Important to recognize that this movement to the upside is on pretty significant volume. Now, we have this movement to the downside on strong volume as well. Okay, so it's kind of hard to say right now where this settles up. Um, you know, of course, when you get some of these, I mean, Oklo itself is kind of an interesting one. We don't even have SMRs built yet. Uh, of course, that is going to occur, but, you know, this goes over, you know, this spreads out over uh, maybe even a decade, you know. So you have some really high movement here. You're going to come back down on some equal kind of volume, probably can some consolidation uh, lower than that high. Um, if Nextera does well, I can see these stocks getting a lot more attention and taking back up. And that would be a great time uh, to kind of add to that position because no doubt uh, long term, I think there was just some immediate exuberance on this. When I was talking about CCJ and UEC and some of these companies, 
I was talking about it in the sense like add this thing to your portfolio and just like forget about it. You know, I mean, you're going to get some really nice movement to the upside uh, throughout the years as they're kind of building out uh, this infrastructure. Um, I, I didn't think that the news cycle was going to take it in the way that it does. Uh, of course, you got to sell the news on it. And uh, I knew when I was seeing certain, you, you know, people online or accounts online talking about piling in to uranium uh, that this, at least in the short term, uh, was going to experience some kind of pullback uh, because it's just saturated at that point. Uh, so we'll see what happens with Nextera. Again, looking for an EPS of 99 cents and then a revenue of 8.01 billion. Yeah, so baseball. Definitely, I'm still bullish on this kind of stuff, but I think that you're going to have, so especially with like CCJ and UEC, you're definitely going to have somewhat of a pullback, right? You definitely get lighter volume right now on coming back down. I'm still super bullish on uranium. I just think up until this earnings release, uh, you know, I think you're going to get a pullback. You might even get one afterwards as well. That's kind of my position on it. I'm still long term for sure uranium. You guys know that uh, if you've listened to me. That's why I've been in these kind of stocks. So let's take a look at some other things uh, regarding earnings. Take a look at RTX quickly. That is Raytheon. Uh, some interesting stuff, news coming out with them. Off about 0.73%, but you had some really nice, <laughs> I guess, breath today. Um, so they uh, have a record $221 billion backlog uh, with the power's earnings surge. So they had third quarter sales hitting $20 uh, billion. That's up 6% from last year. That's fueled by strong demand in its defense and commercial aftermarket segments. The company's swing back to profitability, obviously, is pretty uh, fantastic, reporting $1.47 billion and net income compared to a 984 million loss in the prior year. Adjusted earnings per share surged 16% to $1.45, uh, beating Wall Street's 134 estimate. And uh, yeah, they did a really good job of getting profitable again. With the record of 221 billion uh, order backlog, RTX is raising the stakes, boosting its full year sales guidance to a range of 79.25 billion to 79.75 billion and lifting adjusted EPS expectations to as high as $5.58. Demand, obviously, is always going to be pretty good for companies like this, especially uh, during times of very rocky uh, geopolitical interactions. But uh, yeah, $2.5 billion operating cash flow, $2 billion in free cash flow this quarter, $1.1 billion returned in capital. Yeah, they did pretty good. Now, caveat to that, which isn't necessarily affecting the situation, uh, but they're paying uh, $950 million to resolve federal charges of fraud and bribery, uh, which seems to be kind of part and parcel, parcel maybe like an operating expense uh, for some of these larger uh, kind of defense companies. Uh, essentially, they were uh, essentially scheming to bribe a high-level Qatari Air Force official from 2012 and 2016 with the goal of enabling Raytheon to win contracts from Qatar or Qatar's military, including a joint operations center that Raytheon would build for Qatar. Well, it's all right. Looks like everyone kind of took that okay. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kickstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate, interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, 
It has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, everyone. Jacob Shoup, this is the Tom O'Brien Show. Now, every Tuesday on the second segment, we are joined by Basil Chapman. Basil hosts the Tiger Technicians Hour at uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Time right here on TFNN. If you're watching us on YouTube, make sure to give that stream a like. If you look over here on my screen, I'm on the TFNN website. We can go over here to the Newsletters tab. And right here, you'll see the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman. Now, I talk about this newsletter the same way every week, but it's because I really do mean it. It is nice, it is concise, it is thorough, and additionally, he has a nice kind of weekly overview. One of the things I want to say as well is that if you are a subscriber, Basil does these live subscriber webinars. The last one was July 23rd. That is sectors and stocks to focus on in this next phase of the market cycle. If you have never subscribed to the opening call newsletter, just go ahead and do it. It is a 30-day money-back guarantee, so for whatever reason it doesn't work out for you, there is no risk, but we're going to bet that it is going to work out for you. Uh, we are joined by Basil Chapman right now. Basil, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Thank you, uh, Jacob. Uh, we're all surviving the shock of uh, Tom's passing and uh, the inspiration that he is, and that's the reason why we want to just keep going. That's that, that will be in the milieu of Tom O'Brien, yeah. You know, every time I, when I started working here, um, you know, I needed to get to know the host a little bit more, kind of on the back end. And every time, you know, he just, he'd known you for a long time and he just never had anything but praise to say for you and your analysis. And um, I, I think we're all, I can speak for all of us, say that we're lucky to kind of carry on his torch in the way uh, that we're able to uh, because of everything he built. And uh, for, for people like you, Basil, who were with him, uh, for a long time and helped him kind of build this whole thing. Uh, you created opportunities for so many people and uh, we really appreciate it, so. Well, thank you, you've done a fabulous job as well, Jacob. So looking at the market, there are certain things that I thought I'd just go over right now for anyone who's uh, new to my work. Uh, let me get this chart up here. This basically shows that what I look for is the lowest low bar <clears throat> where I can start counting the waves to the upside. So the Chapman wave is the waveform that never sleeps. Each peak gets labeled, each trough gets labeled. And on the way up, I like to look at four peaks. If the um, buy signal gets upgraded to a buy mode, it means that you should get at least four higher peaks and then other things can happen. It could recycle higher, it could pull back sharply, just that's where you do, the yellow light goes on and you do your analysis. So the first part is quite easy. <clears throat> Excuse me. What I am looking at here on the down the left side chart is the last buy mode 
I went to a peak F and then pulled back. That's the sixth highest peak. But this last one went to the third highest peak, peak C at 43,325. <clears throat> if my analysis is correct, with this nine period moving average still very strong over the 14, with the MACD still positive, it's just about to negative, but it's still holding pretty well. The gray relative strength is doing nicely. The stochastic is flat. This um, green and um, red a moving average, you can see these two lines here. It's at 88%. Over 80% is great. Uh, 80, 88 to 95 is fabulous. That's what you want to see. When it's flat above 80% and holding, that's just a very good sign. And the blue line, this little blue line here is on balance volume. It says it's a little bit overboard. So the most important thing <clears throat> is, and I'm going to go to this quickly. This shows you the nine period moving. I have only three lines here. One, the thick one is the Dow daily chart. The green is the nine period moving average. The black is the 14. <clears throat> And you can see from this V-shaped turnaround, or, <clears throat> excuse me, the August low, where we started adding positions, this green line has not turned pink at all. So that, to me, is really important. Mm -hmm. So that's the, the daily chart. The weekly chart has gone above the inside track. I call this the repellent zone until it starts. The price goes above it. Now it's a propellant zone. So this is positive. The technicals are still very strong, and the monthly chart has gone to a leg east. So, so far, that is all very good action. So, I thought <clears throat> what I would say is, within this context of this potential cup formation, trying to get back to 43,325 to break it by a penny, to go to 43,325.10, I believe it is, yes, but above the 0 0.09 high, one penny above starts at leg D. Anywhere in this region, I'm going to start looking to see. We haven't had any short positions for a while. At this particular point, I'm starting to say, I think we're slightly on a purely technical basis becoming a little overbought. Do we want to wait for another big pullback to add to more longs? Or is this an opportunity for short-term traders to go short? I'll be making those decisions in, in about a couple of days, I believe. So that's the one thing. <clears throat> the other is, in talking about this cup formation, I thought I wasn't going to do that, but I'll do it right now. I spoke to you, I think, last week about Solventum Corporation. It's yep. the healthcare spinoff from Triple M. And I said that we've been long since the mid-50s. <clears throat> And then it ran up very sharply. I won't discuss this now. Maybe I'll do it uh, later in the week on my show, The Tiger Technicians Hour. This Chapman Wave instant restart where within three bars it made a higher high than D. And that, I'd say I'd use this as an example of an instant restart. But if it goes much higher, then I think that it's just a single leg to the upside. And when it pulls back, it should, should pull back quite sharply. Well, it, it went to 73.40. We took uh, some profits from our core position, pulled back, started a potential cup formation. And then I said, we're going to add back our the, the positions we took off because this looks like it wants to make that pattern that I call the, the reverse Y. When it goes sharply up, pulls back from a high, comes down, and then goes back to the level. What happens at that level is really important. So far, it's holding very well. Um, we, we added back at about 68 uh, it went to 73, and uh, now it's at 72.29. So these are, these are positions that one of the, the type of thing that we're looking at for the opening call subscribers, where we want to take, I believe, in money management. So we take little bits off as the price goes higher, and then at an appropriate point, we'll add back. For instance, you were just talking about uranium. <clears throat> we spoke about this, I think, last week. And I said, we've been long Uranium Energy Corporation. There's a second time we've been long. We're long earlier on. It had a huge move up, and then we got out. Lately, we've been back in, and we started to take profits. And what I was looking for was a test. Let me just move this chart. A test of the, the last high, which was at um, 8.34. When I did that the other day, it went uh, to the 8. 850 is almost 860, and now it's pulling back a little bit. So um, you had spoken about maybe a little digestive phase. I think we're looking at that, but it's still a very strong chart. Broke totally. through a new multi-year high 
in the weekly. So this is all acting very well. So this is the type of thing I give to subscribers to my opening call. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. I want to say as well, I know you don't have the chart up for it, but I've been following Hood uh, since you had spoken about it. And uh, it's doing well today as well, up 1.87%. Um, guys, if you want to see more of Basil, again, 10 a.m. Eastern time right here on Tiger Financial News Network. He's a Tiger Technician's Hour <clears throat> and the opening call newsletter. You've got to check it out again. You, The analysis speaks for itself. Basil, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much, Jacob. Have a great day. You too. See you tomorrow now. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Aura. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 Days Risk-Free today. TFNN, educating investors. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading. Trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, everyone. This is Jacob Shoup. Of course, you are watching The Tom O'Brien Show. Uh, now, every Tuesday, we are joined by Tim Ord. Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. 
Uh, now, even before I met Tim or interviewed him on here, or even before Tim, well, at least uh, in the time that I had been before he was coming on the Tom O'Brien show, uh, Tom would talk to me about this guy, Tim Moore. I, I had not heard of him before. I was not into technical analysis uh, to my detriment uh, for most of my life in college, especially. Um, and uh, I finally got to hear his analysis on with Tom O'Brien. And uh, then I was able uh, to, to host these kind of shows and talk with him as well. And uh, he is a fantastic uh, technician, and it is always fantastic to have him on again. That is the Ord-Oracle.com. Tim, how are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for a great introduction. Thank you. Absolutely. We're happy to have you here, Tim. Seriously. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks. So let's take a look at the market. I think so. So. Uh, it's, uh, chart one. This is kind of showing where we are right now, um, and it's about got three indicators here, kind of only pointing in the same direction. But anyhow, the chart one is a seminal indicator, and it's uh, equity put call ratio readings. And the bottom window is the equity put call ratio readings on a ten day average. Next uh, window up higher. Uh, at the bottom there is a five-day average. And so I kind of do a double check. So I look at 10-day, which is two weeks, five days, one week. And both of them are right in the, the bearish territory. And all those dotted uh, uh, vertical lines show times when both those indicators, those time frames, rather, uh, was in bearish territory. And we had one here a couple of weeks ago, back beginning of October and happening again about mid-October, even though the market staged a little bit of a rally. Uh, there's just too much call buying here. Mm -hmm. uh, so call buying is actually bearish for the market. So I'm still thinking, uh, anticipating a pullback here because of, of this is one of the indicators. And let's flip to the next indicator. Yeah. Um, which is the uh, bottom window is the SPX VIX ratio. I think, yeah, this is on a weekly time frame. And you kind of see what's going on here back in 2000, late or early 2000, looks like about January of 2020. Uh, yeah, the market was making higher highs. That ratio was making lower highs. Then October through uh, probably December there of 2000. 21 kind of same thing happened uh the shaded pink area where the spx made higher highs the ratio made lower highs you got to pull back and this uh divergence started basically around july 1st even though the market's pushed higher this ratio is pushed lower so i'm thinking this is you know this is a election year and so i think the market's kind of being cautious here our, our <laughs> decline i don't think we're getting a big decline but i still think we're, we're going to have a some sort of a pullback here going to the election and also seasonality wise usually two weeks before the election the market at a minimum flips sideways if not turns down and we pretty much flipped sideways here about a week ago we really hadn't made any progress and we haven't made any decline either but we haven't advanced it either uh so i think the market's digesting uh, who's going to be president? Markets don't like unknowns. Uh, right. The market, if it's unknown to the market, usually it declines into that unknown until um, that unknown is uh, found out. I guess you might say. And so, even though uh, it's pretty much of a toss-up right now, I guess according to news today, that may change over the next several days. But it looks like Trump is ahead minor ahead of, of Harris, but that may change again over the next several days. So um, the market really hadn't decided who's going to be president yet. At least, at least it doesn't know. But once it does know, that's when the rally will start. Right. And here's another indicator that kind of says the same thing. Uh, the top window is the RSI for the XP, uh, SPX tilt ratio. And so you're, you're combining the equity market with the uh, bond market. So it's, it's pretty much, you know, this is a combined, you know, assets in these two markets are trillions. So it gives a good picture uh, of what goes on. And normally, uh, tilt trades opposite of the SPX. But when it goes in an opposite direction too fast, it's usually a bottom either, or if it's going down, uh, if the ratio is going up too fast, it's usually a top. And it works better at bottoms at tops, but this ratio has been staying up around, or the RSI has been staying up 
the 70 range on this XPX tilt ratio since about you know close to mid-October here. So for the last uh, week, week and a half, it's kind of stayed in bearish territory. So I still think we're actually pulling back here. Uh, not a big decline, but I, I think we pull back to the previous highs. Uh, the bottom window is the SPX, but I think we pull back to the previous highs of July in mid-August there, mid-July, mid-August, which is right around that 560, uh, uh, 5600 on the uh, SPX, which happens to be there's a gap there also. Uh, so I think that's probably where we pull back. We're, I tanned the area or pink, uh, uh, shaded in pink, the, the area where the election is. And so I'm thinking the pullback's upside is minimal. I still think that pullback is is lightly coming here in the next. Um, you know, I thought the decline to start by now, but um, I think that it's it's building some sort of a top here. So not a big top, but I, I think if you have to put a trade on it, it'd have to be bearish. Right. And there's another indicator. Well, actually, I got two more indicators here. Kind of suggest the same thing. Let's flip to chart four. Yes. One moment here. Okay. Perfect. We got chart four up. All right, the top window is a 10-day trend, and usually it gets around 0.9, which is the, uh, uh, the top window is the 10-day uh, arms index, and that right below, right around 0.9 area, is kind of the bearish area. And I got times when the 10-day trend got down to 0.9, and in about a week or so ago, it did get down to 0.9. We're back to around. We're actually one right now. It's fairly neutral. Uh, for panic, you need it up around 1.2. Uh, but this leans more bearish than bullish. I'll put it. So it's kind of a market's kind of a humdrum area right now. It's, it's not doing anything. So it's digesting what the news is, is probably uh, on the election. You know, it, it will yeah. be bearish or bullish, depends on, I guess, who you talk to. But the, the gods of the market, I might say, are, are kind of staying neutral on their positions because they're not making a decision yet. Well, it's it, interesting. It, it's, 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 go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. no, I was saying it's, it's interesting, too. I, well, we'll talk about when we get back. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right, right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. 
a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, everyone. Jacob Shoup joined by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Uh, before we went to the break, we're taking a look at maybe at uh, some movements in the SPX, uh, perhaps some kind of topping pattern currently uh, up until the election. And uh, Tim, you were mentioning the uncertainty in the market, and it seems like there is some, the movement's almost bizarre, right? Because there's definitely a lot of news and behavior, especially with what we're seeing in, in the, the broader market itself, of an absolute uncertainty of, of who's going to kind of come out victorious on this. And one of the things right. that I follow, at least, is some of these binary kind of, you know, binary option websites, poly market, cow sheep. And in recent times, the, the disparity between the two um, excuse me, not between, you know, uh, Calci and Poly Market, but between these binary options companies and then the market is, is grand. So, I mean, you have something on Poly Market right now with Trump at 65, Harris at 35. It's a little bit uh, tighter on Calci, um, but it's it's unique because usually in the past, um, if you followed some of these, these binary websites, they, they were pretty in line with what the rest of the market was doing uh, as well. So some, some unique stuff going on with that, I would say. Um, but anyways, we can kind of move forward there. I just wanted to throw that out there. It's kind of interesting. Right. Yeah, it's uh, I know the betting markets, too. Is that what those poly markets are? Or the betting <laughs> yes. Markets? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. There's, right. There's, yeah. Right. Yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. So those are actually uh, seem to be pretty accurate. So, yeah, yeah. they have Trump ahead. So um, I don't know. But the markets, are, you know, so far, uh, I guess the, the, the end the no money really hadn't bet hard yet on uh, on 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 a candidate I guess you might say until right so we'll see how that works out but anyhow the, the stuff I'm seeing right now kind of just lean bearish I flipped to chart five perfect here's another indicator actually this is a real simple indicator it works works well on the, the daily the weekly the monthly but all the middle window is the SPY and I have a Bollinger band on it and it seems really pretty well. It picks out bottoms pretty well. It picks out tops pretty well. But the indicator, how it works is the market closes 50%. If the SPs close above the outer Bollinger Band, whether that's the upper or lower, more than 50%, at a minimum, you usually get a consolidation. And uh, over the last uh, several months, this goes charts goes back to mid-May, but it picked out the July high pretty well. As you can see there, it closed above the upper Bollinger Band about 50%. That stalled the market, went down. Then into the August low, 100% of the trading range closed below the lower Bollinger Band. That was a buy signal. And uh, and actually, we caught that buy signal on your show, I think. So we, we, we ride that one up. Yeah. And recently, over the, it looks like about, a week, uh, about a week and a half ago, uh, the SPY closed above the more than 50% above the upper Bollinger Band. And if you can see, the market just flips sideways here. So uh, the Bollinger Band is actually the outer Bollinger Bands, that's the lower and the upper one, are two standard deviations against the 20 day average. And that 20 day average is the uh, that dotted line in between. So if the market gets too far away from that dotted line, in other words, more than two uh, standard deviations, it normally comes right back to it. Uh, so 
anyhow, the, the market, you know, the market's made up of extremes. And so my technical analysis is all about extremes. If it's not doing anything, you don't get a signal until it, you know, gets extreme up or extreme down. I got indicators that point those times out. And this is one of those indicators. So I think at a minimum, uh, if you get above the upper Bollinger Band by 50% or more, at a minimum, you come back down to the mid Bollinger Band. I see. Uh, so that would be my minimum downside target. But I think we'll actually go all the way back down uh, to the lower Bollinger Band, which happens to be into that gap area. If you look where the Bollinger Band currently is right now, it's coming in around uh, – uh, on the SPY 564 area, which is pretty much where that gap is, if you can see it. So that'd be my downside target to the lower Boeing band, which happens to be where the gap is, which happens to be where the July high is and the August high is. Right. So it's quite a bit of information that suggests we'll probably get to 560 area. And so will that be a low? Uh, my bet, probably. But we'll have to wait and see if and when we get there. So um, uptrends, if you look at the top window, that's the SPY tilt ratio. And in uptrends, that ratio rises. In a downtrend, it declines. And a lot of times, right before the market pops out or tops out, a lot of times that will decline. So far, it hasn't done that. Sometimes it just goes up and straight down again. But uh, the SPY tilt ratio is not showing a divergence, but the RSI is. So you got two different things looking at here. So anyhow, uh, 560s. Uh, Somewhere around end of end of this month, first of next month, is is my target. I think we got enough time for the gold market. Absolutely, we do. We always have enough time for the gold market. All right, we're on a bicycle and uh, not showing any weakness whatsoever. The yeah. top one is GDX, and if you can see, you know, we had had some previous highs up around that 40 range, and we're kind of seeing a science strength through that 40 range. So, does that mean a top? Well, doesn't appear to be, because if you go to the bottom window, uh, which is the 50-day uh, average of the up-down volume, as long as this indicator stays above zero, so it, it's a trend-following indicator. So below zero, it's a downtrend. Above zero, it's an uptrend. And we popped above uh, the zero line back in late March, early April, and it stayed there. Uh, today's readings uh, 16.93. Uh, it's not showing any weakness. A lot of times, this uh, the GDX will start going up, and this indicator starts going down. And so far, that has not happened. You know, we're pretty much on the indicator wise. We're pretty much just uh, staying at uh, the highs of, of over, over the, since April. You know, the previous highs is up around that 17, 18 area, and we're staying right in that high range. So even though the market's kind of accelerating here. Uh, the internals so far look good. Uh, so, trends up, uh, even Fantastic. on a short term basis. We got about a minute to go here, I see. Yeah, well, we can. The chart seven. Yeah. And here's another indicator that kind of shows divergence. Um, the, uh, this is the weekly chart. Top window is GDX, next window down is the up down volume, uh, cumulative up down volume. Uh, with this Bollinger Band, the bottom one, it was a cumulative advanced decline uh, with the Bollinger Band. And in, in a nutshell, when these two indicators close above the mid Bollinger Band, it's a buy signal. So you get a buy signal late March. And uh, it's been trending up since both of them. So the advanced clients get actually getting stronger and the up down volume is getting stronger. What I wanted to point out is the uh, this indicator can show a divergence where the GDX highs and those indicators make lower highs and if you go back to uh, early 2023 the february march period uh gdx made a higher high there that's that's the red arrows and that indicator uh, at least up down volume made a lower high same happened in the late uh, 2023 looks like about november december gdx made higher highs and the up down volume which is the mid indicator or the Second indicator from the bottom made lower highs. We're not having that here. So markets up on GDX. There's no sign of a even a consolidation for the moment. Fantastic. Tim, thank you so much for contributing again, coming on. We'll uh, see you Thursday, okay? All right. Sounds good. Fantastic. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Good to have you. Folks, stay right there. We'll be right back.
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. A must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating Investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, everyone. Jacob Shoup, this is the Tom O'Brien Show. We were just joined by Tim Ward of the Ord Oracle. If you didn't miss that segment or want to go back over it, you can uh, go to TFNN on YouTube at the end of programming today. Our producer is always hard at work getting you the clips that you need in order to learn better. Uh, additionally, if you want to learn more, you can, of course, go to the Ord-Oracle.com. Uh, additionally, you can go to the service tab right over here at TFNN.com. We have uh, two fantastic educational lectures by Tim Ord. That is the secret signs of market tops. Of course, he was talking about when he was looking at the SPX, he believes we might be in for a short term top at this kind of level. Uh, that is fantastic to kind of wrap your head around the way that he uh, looks at these charts. And then of course, the six secret ratios every trader should know with Tim Ord. And of course, he has these, a lot of these usually included uh, in his analysis when he comes on. Uh, a little bit more, I guess, I wanna say to with how this market seems to be looking at, I, I, I guess, kind of the end game of this election, the resolve of this election, yeah, the DJT up 9.6%. As I was, I was saying maybe a few weeks ago or a month ago, uh, that this stock just responds to positive news uh, with Trump getting into power. What Trump media was created for is no longer really applicable. There's not that vacuum that exists now that Musk has um, X under his control, formerly uh, known as Twitter. And initially, Poly Market, you know, it's kind of bizarre. And I, I wonder if you had like a massive whale come in here that kind of switched all this up. Poly Market's interesting because you can kind of see, you know, who's 
been the most accurate on, on certain things, uh, who has the most money. And this is just account, of course, can be anonymous or it cannot be just depending on what the person decides to name their account. We have a 65.1 Trump, 35 Harris. Uh, there is a pretty large disparity between that data and then who they believe the popular vote winner is going to be, which is a 43 Trump, 57 Harris. Now, of course, our election is not determined by the popular vote, but that still is uh, somewhat extreme. Folks, thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, it is fantastic to still be on with you all. Uh, we're going to keep moving forward. Uh, take care. We have a lot to look forward to this week in the market, and we, uh, we hope to hear from you again. Stay right there. Building wealth trading in the 